Welcome back to part four in our video series on the prequel characters from A Song of Ice and Fire. This video explores the costumes and physical descriptions of the non-Targaryen women's prequel characters. If you missed the previous videos on the men's prequel costumes, I will leave it in the description below. To stir your imagination, we have sought out some amazing conceptual artwork from the world of Ice and Fire and Fire and Blood, along with some stunning concept illustrations, fan art, cosplays, and couture fashions. You will find links to over 80 artist pages in the pinned comment below. To bring this series to light are co-producers Tatiana Melendez and Vanessa Amesty. Vanessa has been a longtime viewer and is a Song of Ice and Fire book aficionado and costume lover. And you will know Tatiana as one of the trio of my Game of Queens panel and in this video you'll see many of her costume designs featured. You can learn more about the both of them in the description below. The information in this video comes from a variety of sources including Elio and Linda's The World of Ice and Fire, the Untold History of Westeros and the Game of Thrones, which throughout the video I will refer to as the World Book. And we also include Fire and Blood from 2018, along with a series of short animated videos titled Histories and Lore, included in the Blu-ray release of each TV season of HBO's Game of Thrones and narrated by the main cast. Many of these can be found on YouTube. While we strive for accuracy, we may occasionally get something wrong, and as a reminder, you don't have to be a book reader to enjoy the ride. Now let's get started. Queen Nymeria Nymeria was a princess of the Roiner, a culture of river-faring people who dwelt on the banks of the immense river Roin in Essos. She led the Roiner to Dorne after their defeat by the Valyrian Freehold in the Second Spice War. In the World Book, Queen Nymeria was said to have cunning, skill, and wisdom. In A Feast of Crows, Ariane Martell thinks that Nymeria burned as bright as any man, and so shall I, she said. In Histories and Lore House Martell, Oberon Martell said that thousands of years ago, the warrior Queen Nymeria crossed into Dorne from Essos, fleeing the Dragon Lords of Valyria. After she landed, she burned her ships, all 10,000 of them, so no cowards could slink home, Dornish in spirit before she ever was in flesh. She was lucky to land in Dorne, where powerful women are not locked away in seps and the beds of old men. Alaria Sand said in Histories and Lord Dorne that almost all the petty lords made it clear that she wasn't welcome, all but one, Moors of House Martell. He saw in her a strength to match any man including his rivals. After she accepted his marriage offer, she set fire to her ships. Oberyn said, wetting his strength to hers, his spear to her son, they subdued all his rivals together. According to histories and lore, the Reiner women and men of Essos would don silver-scaled armor, fish head helms, tall spears, and turtle shell shields. According to the World Book, while she did not bear arms in battle, Nymeria commanded her armies, leading them on the battlefield. Alarius said for many years Nymeria and Moors waged war against all rivals. After Moors fell in battle, Nymeria took command of his armies and united Dorne in two years. She ruled for 27 more, and though she married again, those husbands were little more than counselors and consorts. Dorne was Nymeria, and Nymeria was Dorne. Princess Maria Martell Maria Martell was the ruling princess of Dorne from House Martell during Aegon's conquest. The World Book stated that by the time of the conquest that Maria was around 80 years old, fat, blind, and almost bald. The Storm King, Argilac Durandin, called her the Yellow Toad of Dorne. After the Dornish refused to battle the Targaryen Queen Rhaenys and instead launched guerrilla raids on her force, she demanded the surrender of Dorne, but Maria replied that Dorne would never surrender. The World Book stated that the Targaryen army then withdrew from Dorne, leaving the country untaken. Alyssa Velaryon 
Alyssa Valarion was a member of House Valarion during the first century after Aegon's conquest. At the age of 15, she married her cousin, King Aenys I Targaryen, and gave birth to his six children. Some years after Aenys' death, Alyssa served as queen regent to her youngest son, King Jaehaerys I Targaryen. Alyssa was described as having the silvery hair and purple eyes of the Valerians because, according to Fire and Blood, the Valerians were an ancient family descended from Valerian stock. Alyssa was also said to have charm, wit, and kindness. Alyssa remarried to Lord Rogar Baratheon and gave birth to two more children during the marriage. According to Fire and Blood, during her wedding to Lord Rogar, Alyssa wore a great cloak with both the Valerian seahorse and the Targaryen dragon facing each other. The seahorse comes from the Valerian family sigil. Tiana of the Tower Queen Tiana of the Tower was the daughter of a Pentoshi magister who married King Magor I Targaryen, becoming his third wife in a polyamorous union while he was still married to Cerise Hightower and Alice Haraway. Before their marriage, Tiana became Magor's lover during his exile in Pentos. Tiana was also rumored to be the lover of Alice. According to the Sons of the Dragon, Alice joined Magor and Tiana in bed on their first night of marriage. Tiana served as Mistress of Whispers on Magor's small council and was dubbed the King's Raven. She also dabbled in sorcery and alchemy. While there's no physical description of her, in the 2017 novella, The Sons of the Dragon, she is said to be beautiful and is often depicted in artwork with long, dark hair. Tiana was seized and taken to the dungeons by two of Magord's king's guards, and as the torturers prepared their tools, she confessed that she had poisoned the babies in the wombs of both Queen Alice Haraway and Jane Westerling. In the end, Tiana met a gruesome death. The World Book stated that she was killed by Magor's own hand, her heart cut out with the Valyrian steel sword Blackfire, and thrown to his dogs. Alyssa Farman Alyssa Farman was a member of House Farman during the reign of King Jaehaerys I Targaryen. Alyssa had blue eyes and long flaxen hair, and she was high-spirited. Archmaester Gildane describes her in Fire and Blood as sharp of wit and sharper of tongue. Alyssa loved horses, dogs, and hawks. She was a fine singer and a skilled archer, but her great love was sailing. According to Fire and Blood, Alyssa's younger brother Andro married Princess Raina Targaryen, the widow of King Magor the Cruel. Lord Farman's maester, Smike, speculated the princess had wed Andro, not because she loved him, and certainly not because he was worthy of her, but because she had fallen in love with his sister Alyssa. Alyssa sailed Raina and her household to Dragonstone, a daring voyage right around Westeros, and remained there with her. Alicent Hightower Alicent Hightower was a member of House Hightower, who became the second wife to King Viserys I Targaryen. She was the daughter of Sir Otto Hightower, who had been Hand of the King to Jaehaerys I, Viserys I, and later his grandson King Aegon II, Alicent's son. The 2013 novella, The Princess and the Queen, which was later incorporated into Fire and Blood, described Alicent as precocious at 15 and clever and lovely at the age of 18. After having given birth four times, Alicent remained as slender and graceful as before the first pregnancy. The 2013 novella The Princess and the Queen tells of how the tension began. At the great tourney in King's Landing held to celebrate the fifth wedding anniversary of King Viserys and Queen Alicent, the Queen wore a green gown to the opening feast, while Princess Rhaenyra dressed in Targaryen red and black. Note was taken and thereafter it became the custom to refer to greens and blacks when talking of the Queen's party and the party of the Princess, respectively. 
The Princess and the Queen also tells how when King Viserys I died in his sleep in King's Landing, a servant warned Queen Alicent as instructed without telling anyone else. Alicent warned Sir Kristen Cole and together they called the Small Council where plans were made to crown Alicent's son Prince Aegon instead of Princess Rhaenyra who had been Viserys' heir, launching a civil war that became known as the Dance of the Dragons. At the end of the dance, Alicent was arrested by the Valarians and later in her life, as written in Fire and Blood, ordered confined to Magor's Holdfast in the Red Keep. She died a few years later of winter fever. Lena Valarian Lady Lena Valarian was the eldest child and only daughter of Lord Corlys Valarian and Princess Rhaenys Targaryen. She was the second wife of Prince Daemon Targaryen and gave birth to his twin daughters, Rhaena and Bela Targaryen. Lena was a dragon rider and rode the dragon Vagar, and according to the Maester of Driftmark's account in the novella The Rogue Prince and Fire and Blood, showed far more interest in flying than in boys. Lena is described as having a great mane of silver gold ringlets that fell down past her waist and she inherited the beauty of her mother, Rhaenys, and the bold, adventurous spirit from her father, Corlys. Their sigil of House Valarian is a silver seahorse on a sea green field, so we can certainly imagine Lena dressed in variations of these colors with the seahorse motif featured prominently. By the age of 12, she was considered a fiery young girl. By 22, Lena had grown into a tall, slender, and beautiful woman. According to the Fool Mushroom, she was almost as pretty as her brother Laner, likely meant to be a jab at Laner's sexuality. When Prince Daemon Targaryen arrived on Driftmark, seat of House Valarian in the Crownlands, the singers claimed that he fell in love with Lena. Others believed he saw her as a means to further his ambition. Lena's betrothed was killed by Daemon with Dark Sister and then they wed shortly after. Lena became good friends with his sister-in-law and Daemon's cousin, Princess Rhaenyra Targaryen. Lena died from complications of childbirth after the birth of her third child. Nettles Nettles, also known as Nettie, was a dragon seed or baseborn dragon rider and the first and possibly last dragon rider of the Dragon Sheep Stealer, a notably ugly muddy brown dragon. Nettie fought on behalf of Queen Rhaenyra Targaryen during the Dance of the Dragons. Nettie delivered the dragon, a freshly slaughtered sheep every morning until Sheep Stealer learned to accept and expect her. Nettie was described in The Princess and the Queen as a small brown girl of 16. She had black hair, brown eyes, and brown skin. She was also said to be skinny, foul-mouthed, filthy, and fearless. Fire and Blood stated that Nettie had crooked teeth and a scarred nose who could not be called pretty. Oberyn said in Histories and Lore that during the Dance of the Dragons that Queen Rhaenyra now mistrusted all dragon seeds, including the girl who rode with her husband Daemon. She ordered the girl's head to be sent to her, but there was a complication. As well as her dragon, the girl had taken to riding Daemon. When Daemon received the Queen's order, he proclaimed it a Queen's words and a whore's work. He sent the girl away at dawn, watching her and her dragon vanish into the morning mists. Nettles and Sheep Stealer vanished before the war's end, and none could say where they went until years after. Jenny of Old Stones Jenny of Old Stones, called Lady Jenny in court, was the wife of Duncan Targaryen, the Prince of Dragonflies. It's written in A Storm of Swords that there are many songs written about her, including Jenny's song, The Ghost of High Heart's Favorite. Jenny claimed descent from long vanished kings of the first men, and according to the words of Jenny's song, she wore flowers in her hair. 
The World Book stated that Jenny was said to have been a strange and lovely girl and was considered by some local villagers a half-mad peasant or even a witch, perhaps because of her friendship with the ghost of High Heart. Duncan Targaryen, the Prince of Dragonstone, met Jenny while traveling the Riverlands and loved Jenny so much he married her against the wishes of his father, King Aegon V Targaryen. Aegon tried to have the marriage dissolved, but Duncan refused to give Jenny up, ultimately abdicating the Iron Throne. One of Barristan Selmy's thoughts in A Dance with Dragons are, The Prince of Dragonflies loved Jenny of Oldstone so much, he cast aside a crown, and Westeros paid the bride price in corpses, in reference to a short-lived rebellion started by an outraged Lionel Baratheon. Aegon and Prince Duncan were both killed in the tragedy at Summerhall. Some of the lyrics of Jenny's song are, High in the halves of the kings who are gone, Jenny would dance with her ghosts. The Ghost of High Heart The Ghost of High Heart, named so for her location in High Heart, a tall hill sacred to the children of the forest in the Riverlands, is a dwarfish and albino old woman and reputed woods witch who had prophetic visions of the future and the past. Her friend, Jenny of Oldstone believed that the ghost of High Heart was not a dwarf, but one of the children of the forest. According to the Storm of Swords, the ghost of High Heart has white hair so long it almost touches the ground, her flesh is very pale, and she has red eyes. She is no more than three feet tall, and she walks with a gnarled black cane. In A Dance with Dragons, Barristan Selmy tells Danny that he believes the Woods Witch died at the tragedy of Summerhall, the same fire that claimed the lives of Jenny's husband, Prince Duncan, and King Aegon V. In A Storm of Swords, Arya and the Brotherhood Without Banners meet with her twice to hear her prophecies. Her payment both times is to hear Jenny's song. Joanna Lannister Joanna Lannister was a member of House Lannister, who became Lady of Casterly Rock, the wife of her first cousin Lord Tywin Lannister, and the mother of Cersei, Jaime, and Tyrion. Joanna went to King's Landing for the coronation of King Jaehaerys II Targaryen and remained as a lady-in-waiting for the future queen, Princess Rhaella Targaryen. According to the World Book, there were rumors that Joanna gave up her virginity to Prince Aerys the night of Jaehaerys' coronation and briefly became Aerys' lover after he ascended the Iron Throne. However, Grandmaster Pycelle insists these tales are baseless as Tywin Lannister, Aerys' hand of the king, would not have married Joanna if they were true. Joanna married Tywin in a lavish ceremony in the Great Sept of Baelor. In a storm of swords, King Joffrey Baratheon drapes Marjorie Tyrell with a wife's cloak, first worn by Joanna in her wedding to Tywin Lannister. Afterward, Joanna was dismissed by Queen Rhaella Targaryen from service in King's Landing because of Joanna's possible relationship with Ares. Joanna departed from Casterly Rock at once, and she seldom visited the capital afterwards. According to A Storm of Swords, Joanna's marriage to Tywin was reportedly a happy one and she became Tywin's trusted counselor and companion. The World Book stated that Joanna gave birth to Cersei and Jaime with Tywin present. King Aerys ordered Tywin to bring Joanna and the children to King's Landing when the children were old enough to travel, but instead, Tywin, Aerys, Prince Rhaegar, and half the court went to the Westerlands in where they remained for most of the next year. Joanna died giving birth to her youngest son, the dwarf Tyrion. Tywin seldom spoke of his wife, but he was greatly saddened by her death and never remarried. Tywin has since blamed Tyrion for Joanna's death. Ashara Dane Ashara Dane was a noblewoman of House Dane and a sister of Sir Arthur Dane, the Sword of the Morning, and a lady-in-waiting to Princess Elia Martell, the wife of Prince Rhaegar Targaryen. It's stated in Game of Thrones and A Dance with Dragons that Ashara was a young, beautiful, tall and fair maiden with haunting violet eyes. Her long, dark hair tumbled around her shoulders, 
According to Cerberus Dimselmi, Daenerys Targaryen's eyes resemble Ashara's eyes. The sigil of House Dane is a white sword and falling star crossed on a lilac field, so we often see Ashara depicted in these colors, a lighter version of her eyes. Before Robert's rebellion at the tourney at Harrenhal, a 10-day tournament, Ashara danced with an 18-year-old Eddard Stark, and according to Ashara's younger sister, Illyria Dane, that's where they fell in love. Sir Barristan Selmy asked himself in A Dance with Dragons, if I had unhorsed Rhaegar and crowned Ashara queen of love and beauty, might she have looked to me instead of Stark? According to Game of Thrones after Arthur's death, Eddard rode to Starfell, the seat of House Dane, to return the Sword of Dawn to Arthur's sister, Lady Ashara, as a sign of respect. In A Storm of Swords, it stated that, sometime afterwards, Ashara jumped from the top of the Pale Stone Sword, one of the towers of Starfall, into the sea, her body never to be found. Elia Martell Princess Elia Martell was a Dornish princess from House Martell, the ruling house of Dorne. She was married to the Crown Prince Rhaegar Targaryen and by him had two children, Princess Rhaenys and Prince Aegon. Elia Martell was said to be beautiful, slender, with black eyes and a flat chest. She always was in delicate health, having been born a month premature, which did not permit her to travel in her youth. Sir Barristan Selmy thought that Elia's looks could never match those of her lady-in-waiting Ashara Dane, next to whom the Dornish princess was a kitchen drab, although, because of his love for Ashara, his opinion was largely biased. Sir Barristan Selmy told Daenerys Targaryen in A Storm of Swords that the Princess Elia was a good and gracious lady, though her health was ever delicate and in A Dance with Dragons that Princess Elia was a good woman, your grace. She was kind and clever, with a gentle heart and a sweet wit. I know the prince was very fond of her. We might imagine Elia dressed in the Dornish colors as taken from their house sigil of a gold spear piercing a red sun on an orange field. According to the books, the Dornish climate favors loose layered robes. Dornish nobles prefer to wear robes of linen, satin, silk, or samite, a rich silk fabric interwoven with gold and silver threads, and accessorized with jeweled belts. According to A Storm of Swords, during her youth, Elia was very close to her younger brother Oberyn, to whom she was only one year apart. When Elia reached the age of marriage, she and her brother Oberyn, together with their mother and their mother's consort, traveled from Dorne to several potential suitors for both Elia and Oberyn. Having broached the subject of a marriage of her children to the Lannister twins Cersei and Jaime, Tywin refused both matches brusquely, informing her how Cersei was meant to marry Prince Rhaegar Targaryen and suggesting the newborn Tyrion, a dwarf, as betrothed to Elia instead, which was taken as an insult. The match between Cersei and Prince Rhaegar was later kiboshed by King Aerys himself. Elia and Prince Rhaegar Targaryen were betrothed and later married in a great ceremony at the Great Sept of Baelor in King's Landing. The newlyweds moved to Dragonstone shortly after their wedding, where Princess Rhaenys, Rhaegar and Elia's first child was born. Rhaegar and Elia's second child, Prince Aegon, was born two years later. According to the Dance with Dragons, following Aegon's birth, the maesters told Rhaegar that Elia would bear no more children. At the tourney at Harrenhal, of which Elia was in attendance, Prince Rhaegar won the tournament, but to the surprise of everyone in attendance, crowned Lady Lyanna Stark of Winterfell, the Queen of Love and Beauty, over his own wife and mother of his children. During Robert's rebellion, Mad King Aerys kept his daughter-in-law Elia and his grandchildren in King's Landing, not for their protection, but as hostages against possible Dornish betrayal. Where the events turned tragic was during the sack of King's Landing and the name of King Robert. Elia's daughter, Princess Rhaenys, was killed by Sir Armory Lorch, and Sir Gregor Clegane murdered Elia's son, Prince Aegon, in front of her. He then raped and murdered her. While Tywin had ordered the children killed, he told his son Tyrion Lannister in a storm of swords, I grant you it was done too brutally, 
Elia need not have been harmed at all. That was sheer folly. Night of the Laughing Tree According to the World Book, the Knight of the Laughing Tree was a mystery knight who fought at the tourney at Harrenhal. Their true identity remains unknown, although some fans have suggested Lyanna Stark for the identity of the mystery knight. According to Helen Reed's daughter Mira Reed's tale, as depicted in A Storm of Swords, a Krynik man, most likely her own father Howland, attended the tourney at Harrenhal. He found himself bullied by three squires, none older than 15 years old. Lyanna Stark, the she-wolf, beat off his attackers with a tourney sword, scattering them away. She cleaned his wounds and bound them with linen, then introduced him to her three brothers. Both Lyanna and the Craddock men recognized the squires at the feast that night and pointed them out to her brothers. Two days later, a mystery knight described as short of stature, with armor that was made up of mismatched armor bits and pieces that appeared ill-fitting on them, appeared on the jousting lists. Their shield was blazoned with the image of a white weirwood with a laughing red face. The knight defended the honor of a Kragnagman by challenging and defeating three knights whose squires had bullied them, demanding that they chastise the squire in order to ransom back their horses and armor. By the next day, it was discovered that the knight had disappeared and only their shield could be found abandoned in a tree. Lyanna Stark Lyanna Stark was the only daughter of Lord Rickard Stark and his wife Lady Liara Stark. She had two older brothers, Brandon and Eddard, and one younger brother, Benjamin. Her supposed abduction and the consequential death of her father Rickard and brother Brandon were the incidents that sparked the uprising known as Robert's Rebellion. In A Game of Thrones, Lyanna is described by most people as beautiful and according to her brother Eddard, she had been a child woman of surpassing loveliness. He tells his daughter Arya in Game of Thrones that Lyanna was beautiful and willful and dead before her time. According to Robert's brother Renly, there were people who claimed Marjorie Tyrell looked like Lyanna Stark, though Eddard disagreed. He thought that Lyanna looked more like Arya, with the typical Stark features of brown hair, a long face, and gray eyes. In the World Book, Maester Yandel described Lyanna as a wild and boyish young thing with none of Princess Elia's delicate beauty. In Game of Thrones, Eddard compared her to his tomboyish daughter Arya in personality, adding that Lyanna probably would have carried a sword if their father had allowed it. Ned tells King Robert in Game of Thrones, You never knew Lyanna as I did, Robert. You saw her beauty, but not the iron underneath. The colors of House Stark are taken from their sigil of a running gray direwolf on an ice-white field, so we might see Lyanna in shades of gray and white. Lyanna is said to have loved winter roses. Lyanna attended the feast during the tourney at Harrenhal with her three brothers. When Prince Rhaegar, a noted musician, performed a sad and beautiful song on his harp, Lyanna wept. According to Eddard's chapter in A Game of Thrones and Danny's chapter in A Storm of Swords during the Great Tourney, Rhaegar defeated his older friend, Sir Arthur Dane. Taking the Winter Rose crown for the Queen of Love and Beauty, he revealed his interest in Lyanna Stark by passing over his wife, Princess Elia, and setting it in Lyanna's lap. Ned Stark later recalled that moment as when all the smiles died. The next year, Rhaegar seemingly kidnapped Lyanna for reasons unknown. This act ultimately triggered Robert's Rebellion, also known as the War of the Usurper, and the downfall of the Targaryen dynasty. Some believe that Rhaegar spent the beginning of Robert's Rebellion with Lyanna Stark at the Tower of Joy in the Red Mountains of Dorne. As depicted in A Game of Thrones inside the Tower of Joy in Dorne, Eddard found Lyanna in a bed of blood dying in a room that smelled of blood and roses. He later transported Lyanna's bones back to Winterfell. Her tomb lies in the crypts of Winterfell beside that of Rickard and Brandon Stark. 
A statue of Lana was carved in the stone of her tomb, though Robert Baratheon felt that the stonemason failed to capture her beauty, telling Ned she was more beautiful than that. Ah, oh, damn it, Ned. Did you have to bury her in a place like this? She deserved more than darkness. At the time of her death, Lyanna had only been 16 years old. In A Clash of Kings, Theon Greyjoy has a nightmare involving a feast of the dead at Winterfell that includes Lyanna with her dead father and brother. She is described as a slim, sad girl wearing a crown of blue roses and a white gown splattered with blood. Thank you to my co-producers Tatiana and Vanessa and to all the talented artists that helped make this video possible. Also thank you to my patrons on Patreon. We will be releasing more videos in the series throughout September. In the next episode we'll look at the book characters not appearing in the show. Thank you for spending time with us. We'll see you in the next video.